Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to Super Fun Sunday. I almost didn't have a Super Fun Sunday today. In fact, I didn't. <laughs> I recorded one. I had a 40 minute one finished. I did artist Zedislaw Beksinski. And unfortunately, when I got done and I was uploading it, I realized the audio had completely digitized itself. Uh, all I can think of is that maybe somehow the connection of my mic was loose. Anyway, it was a loss. And there was nothing I could do to fix it. And uh, it's frustrating when you lose a video like that because it was pretty good. But, uh, you know, going back and trying to do the audio commentary. The commentary is work. It's good. The art is always good. Anyway, I figured what I would do is I worked for a couple of hours and I was like, you know what? You, I really wanted to have one up. The other artist I was considering doing, which is so different than Beksinski stuff, was Francis Manipool. Um, what I love about Francis's Instagram in particular is the fact that he shows so many works in progress of his stuff. And in fact, um, a lot of times he really does almost like a complete tutorial of his process, which I find very interesting. So this should be fun. It's going to be a lot of just really kind of exciting superhero art. And he's really, really good. And uh, let's get to it. He actually has a YouTube channel, too. So I'll have links to all of his uh, pertinent uh, stuff. Here's a little photograph that he uploaded that's a work in progress. There are some personal photos. I'll just remove them quickly as we go through. I didn't have time to really prep for this. I'm kind of squeezing this in behind between um, working myself. This is a really nice um, shot of uh, looks like possibly Justice League. Um, cruising around somewhere really really interesting so uh, francis started out as a traditional artist and in fact he did a large body of work um where he would do um like washes and he really kind of embraced um almost like a darwinian cook <laughs> approach to comics and it was interesting um because uh, francis came up through uh, I, I don't know if it was top cow or aspen but one or the other and um you know really really did some some great stuff there but very different style and as, as he kind of went along at dc um he he really kind of came into his own and started doing some really really interesting stuff i mean this is digital um but uh yeah this this will be fun he's he pencils inks colors his own stuff hopefully we get a real wide spectrum of it and, and uh I, what I like about his stuff, too, is I feel that he's using a lot of cutting-edge techniques, meaning that, like, he'll layer tattoos in on their own color layer and things like that. Um, you can see here as an example. I enjoy seeing stuff like this in the art, though, um, because it's part of the process. It's, it's like, the behind-the-scenes that you might not know. And, look, that is a real confusing thing for people um when you have tattoos on a character especially when when we were doing it traditionally before so i think j scott campbell on a kamikaze piece and um danger girl kamikaze and uh w w one of the girls had a really really complicated um tattoo emblem on her jacket and he did it on its own layer at, at the time but it was traditional so it was like literally on like another sheet of paper i think or a layover so it's fun to see um, uh, how they do it. So this is this is his washes, and then he colored this digitally over his washes. But um, you know, it was interesting as as Francis started doing more of this wash type work. It's really really challenging to do because now you're not rendering things and hatching. You're having to create value with wash, and wash is pretty unforgiving to you know, you hit something too dark or you put a shape in that really doesn't accentuate a part of the face. And um, you can get some real weird structural things going on. So, um, you know, it's challenging. I, I don't see him using as much of the wash stuff lately, but I could be wrong on that too, that maybe he is. This is really nice. And this is more likely his own colors. He's kind of getting into the, um, well, I don't know if it's necessarily where he gets it from, but like the Jorge Jimenez um, sort of disintegrated uh, brush edges. It's a nice look. Jorge is very, very good. Here's one of his, uh, where you get to see the, the work in progress. Very, very cool. Let me see these up here. It's nice. Looks good. It works. Maybe this will be 
Oh, yeah, see? I love when he shows stuff like this. I think it's just so neat to see. Nice drawing of Wonder Woman. We've got the Flash looking cool. Superman. It's nice. These books are brutal. You know, I, I shot a video yesterday for Patreon, and it was a team book. Uh, well, no, uh, I've done a couple of videos for Patreon over the last week. Um, but, yeah, a team book will kick your ass. You'll be drawing a lot of stuff. This is nice, man. Really, really cool to see with just no detail on it. This is nice, too. Like, her breasts. Superman's chest. Like, this is all really good. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I remember years ago when Francis was working at Aspen. Pretty sure it was Aspen. And, and uh, a friend of mine kind of had a similar style at the time. And you could kind of tell it was like he was always a little concerned. Like Francis was getting better and better. And it was like, oh, man, there's always these friendly competitions um, with artists. And I've talked about before sharing an office with J. Scott Campbell when he was huge working on Gen 13, going into Danger Girl. And Mike Turner was his guy. Like they had this sort of um, friendly um, sort of competition going on i never ever heard jeff say anything negative about mike turner to be clear but it was like you know previews would come out and then we'd get the previews magazine and it's like oh man turner just did three covers for like you know this book this book and and this comic is coming out and you know you got to be on your toes because these are the people these are your peers and you know you see someone that that you're similar to or or that you kind of are you know maybe going for the same fan base you know it'll keep you on your toes this is a great superman face right here really really nice god damn but it's neat to see francis has taken his art so far because he's really matured as an artist Yeah, this Superman face right here is just killer. It's interesting because in the other shot, I swear to God he was wearing the eye patch on the other eye. I don't want to go back now and look at it, but I could have swore the eye patch was on the other eye, but maybe I'm remembering it wrong because I think it was coming from this side. Yeah, maybe that's what it was is it was just starting on those sides. This is his cover. It's nice. And, and look, <laughs> this was the other thing with Francis is he he got to a point where look this is this is what you want to see on a book well not necessarily but it's it's the writer and francis and it, I, if i'm not mistaken for a long time francis was writing penciling and inking kind of tony daniels does that at uh tony daniel uh does that at, at dc too um where they're kind of doing like the whole book themselves that's an insane amount of work i mean it's definitely something that not everybody would cut out be cut out for but um it can be done this is uh, that page that we were looking at it's funny how obscure the anatomy is on it. Oh, and this is the one with the eye patch. So it was on that eye. Um, yeah, it's crazy how much of the Flash's anatomy is going. What do I have it on? Oh, okay. It's like grab a uh, color so I can circle things. But yeah, like um, the original drawing of this, he you could really see a lot of anatomy on his back. But man, when it was done, it's like pretty much all gone. This is pretty cool too. But you know, I mean, this, these are nice drawings. He shows a little detail of this. He uses a lot of um, really cool like effects too, like this. Um, you can see the scaling kind of on her body, and there was that honeycomb pattern that he was using on one of the other pieces. He's 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 gotten you know a, a repertoire of texture brushes that he's comfortable with and knows how to use you know and that's that's really was funny as a friend of mine james what's up james uh he sent me a link to um some site was having a black friday sale on um custom brushes i think for illustrator which i don't really use illustrator but um you know look if we go through my photoshop my tools i mean i have a bazillion freaking brushes there's so many but the thing is is and that's not even all that i have i have thousands 
what good does that do me if I don't understand how to use them or I don't use them or I'm not familiar with which ones are my favorites. So what I did um, over a period of time is I, I came up with about 20 that are my favorite sort of digital tools and, and I renamed them something that would be uh, relatable to me. But uh, Francis has done that. You know, he knows he knows his favorites. He knows how to use them. And that's way more efficient than just hoarding digital tools that you're never going to use. So this almost looks traditional, but it may not be. And this is 2018 because this this looks digital over here, but this looks traditional here, but it may not be. Yeah, it's hard to say with that weird. Uh, this isn't a very high res scan of it, is it? And it's funny because this almost has a little bit of a Frank Quietly vibe, uh, just the the face a little bit. Superman is so freaking hard to draw. It's weird because it's just a dude. It's just a dude with the face. But boy, I'll tell you, like I don't know what it is. It's it's he's so simple that he's tricky. Can be. I don't know. I I think I could draw a pretty good Superman now. I don't know about the costume. The costume is never really connected with me. I mean, I know it's very iconic, but, um, you know, it's a guy in pajamas. So this is nice. Oh, man. This is a great, great piece. Love the pose that Aquaman's in. I'm just peeping it. <laughs> This is so different than the Beksinski video. The Beksinski video is so dark and is lots of fine art references and these heavy-duty apocalyptic uh, landscapes and weird cobwebby, fiery buildings. And then we've got superheroes. This is good too. This upshot of Superman's face. This is tough, tough, tough shot to draw. This too. Yeah, he did a real nice job with that. You know, I've been giving recommendations to people, um, you know, that are s sometimes maybe struggling with their work or don't have a lot of time, um, whatever it is that might might be holding you back from drawing. The one thing that you'll never hurt yourself working with is is just drawing heads. You know, if if all else fails and you've only got fifteen or twenty minutes to draw, just try drawing heads at different angles and stuff like that. And, and, you know, depending on how much you've done it, um, your success rate will vary. But, uh, you know, you're going to draw uh, thousands and thousands of faces and heads. Just in general. So you can see um, that he probably went in and did by hand. Maybe, maybe, yeah, hard to say. I mean, you could definitely make a scale effect. This is cool. I love seeing his pencils. Man, that's cool. Yeah, this is fun. I I was excited to do this. It was a it was a bit of a um trippy a trippy choice. Especially coming off the Beksinski video, but uh just checking out this hand, it's pretty cool. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, these are good. Good stuff. He's, he gets like a little bit of like a Jim Lee vibe on this stuff. I, I don't know if he's maybe referencing Jim when he does it, but I've, I've noticed a few times that I've, I've seen a little bit of Jim in his work. Just a little bit. Oh, that's nice. I like seeing it like this. It's a really solid face. Yeah. Really good. That's fun. I wonder. I'm just looking at the rendering. Yeah, those look like individual strokes. So he's just like, you know, they're thinner than that. But I was, I, I was wondering if maybe it was a brush that threw a few strokes at once. Like if you had a brush that would like every time you did it, it was throwing three, something like that which you could easily make. And there's hatching brushes that people use. There you go. It's weird. Huh. I personally, 
I'm drawing this many superheroes on a piece, I'm doing this thing traditionally, which maybe this is traditional. I don't know. It kind of feels digital, but yeah, if I'm doing a team shot of like Justice League ever, it's always going to end up being a traditional piece. Um, why leave that money on the table? Because he could sell this for a few grand easily if it's a traditional piece. It's nice. It's funny, if I just saw this, I would maybe think it's sort of like a Phil Noto piece. This doesn't look like Phil Noto. The structure is not exactly like Phil, but Phil was so famous for doing those front views. This is another shot of this. These might be coming up a little bit out of order. Generally speaking, when he does a piece, he'll show quite a few works and progresses of it, which are, again, they're always really, I think, interesting to see. That is so Jim Lee. Superman? Uh, that's some interesting colors on his face. So I wanted to go back. <laughs> the blue the blue and the black hair is funny. I, I did, a, did a sketch the other day and uh, was... Uh, oh, see, this is cool. So you get to see the, the, the color... I don't know if these are just the flats or him setting up how he's going in to color it, but it's pretty cool. I love stuff like this. He's so open with the the sharing that he does with his process. I think it's just worth its weight in gold. It's so cool when people do that. Yeah, he's he's really it's a trip. He's he's putting like a little bit of like Ivan Rice or like a little Jim Lee into his stuff and it definitely has a bigger like the structure is a little bigger than how he would normally draw characters i think what it what it was is he he used to draw everybody looked sort of like teenagers even if they were full-size adults there was a little bit of a, a youthful quality to his characters he's starting to to bring it up a little bit where the the size of them makes them look more adult it's a real delicate balance the size of your heads and there's all kinds of things that uh it's funny, I saw this in something that I did recently. What was it? I was looking at something just like yesterday and it had that starfish eye thing. This is beat up uh, Flash. Lots of whips of this, this looks cool. He's got the like half tone, half tone newsprint sort of thing going on there. Wow, look at that. Okay, so it is digital. But again, I mean, I would have maybe, uh, ink my, uh, turn the page blue. Let's see if this turns this blue. Yeah, see, I would, I would just make it a blue line, print that out, and then ink it. I'd print it a little lighter, to be clear. I usually will go in and, I print my blue lines out about like this, so that it doesn't show up too much. This is what I'm inking, like Ryan Benjamin or something like that. But, uh, if I were to do layouts digitally, um, you know what I mean? You don't want a super dark blue line because it'll look kind of ugly on the original art. This is nice. Really, really good. Takes balls, man. Going in with wash on a piece like this. Even even this is like high, high risk, but high reward. <laughs> oh, this is really good, too. Yeah, Francis is—he's good, man. I—I missed seeing him at Comic Con this year because I—I am friend friendly with Francis. We don't chat a ton, but I've always liked him and I've met him enough times that I—I I consider him a friend. Um, uh, but he's the nicest guy ever, too. He's just one of the really, really like coolest people. So, it's great to see him drawing so well. This is nice. I like the the light um, sort of dry brush uh, texture he's using. In the, he, I mean, he could be doing it in Clip Studio. It could be in Photoshop. It's hard to say. We'll see if we see his. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if he would show a uh, screenshot of the application that he uses. Like I said, he's pretty transparent with his whole process. So. 
really good to learn from oh, this is nice okay so this is this is the finished inks on this that's wild i don't even know what this looks like almost like a photocopy it's crazy man that is wild i don't know i have no idea how he got that to look like that I guess there there is filters in Photoshop where you can get a photocopy look. I mean, you could lower the layer or like the the. Well, there's a few things you could do. You could do the opacity. You could put it as a multiply layer and have white underneath it, and then just lighten it. It's an interesting look. He may be inking too with like sometimes using like a rougher brush so that, that the lines are just going down almost like they're on kind of rougher paper it's possible i kind of got to watch the clock because like i said this is really the second um when i did this is nice a really really good upshot upshots are tough shots <laughs> it's cool this looks like over the wash And again, if you're going to have Lois Lane and Superman kissing, do it as an original piece of art, you know. Get that money. <laughs> oh, that's cool. He used the tile, uh, <laughs> the tile filter in Photoshop. It's funny. So you you could probably download this material in Clip Studio too, but I, I'm thinking that's Photoshop. It's very colorful. This is cool. That's a nice little drawing. Killian's tie dish. That's nice. It's really good. Yeah, it's cool. It's funny position for the ear. It works though for me. But uh I've been drawing a lot of heads and faces and stuff like that in the the, the comics that I'm drawing right now for the heavy metal and for Blaster Kid. And uh ear placement is always an interesting thing. These are so cool. I love when he shares stuff like this. So badass. These are great sketches, too. They're really, really good. They're really good. Damn. Yeah, those are nice. Great colors. They just look cool. Francis, man. Beast mode. Yeah, man. It's a lot of confidence. A lot of confidence in these sketches. You can really, really feel that he knows what he's doing. He's comfortable. He's done it many, many times. He's seen a million faces, and he's rocked them all. <laughs> there you go. Love. That's interesting. Her face changed a lot once he colored it. It's really interesting, too, how spontaneous most of the line art looks. This is probably lightboxed, if I'm going to guess. He he probably lightboxed this, because I don't really see any underdrawing, uh, structure, structural underdrawing, I and mean, there's a little bit of, like, a line here. But uh, he probably lightboxed this onto this board, but it's funny how much harder he worked on the faces than anything else. Everything else is fairly like kind of a one and done you can see he switched the sword up the position of it which is always a good call like like uh i was looking at something with kelsey oh it was an elric piece that um mateo mestri had done and it was like you could kind of tell it was a photo bash but really the the get the tell was just the fact that it was at such a weird angle it was just so simple that you know even just turning the sword like francis did to this angle you know and having some actual i don't know if that's the way the history went but you know what i mean having a little bit of perspective and depth to it just makes it look way more interesting you know it's just a cooler angle for the sword you know so it's good shit like this too you can see you can see he's working this he's working these weapons and he's making sure to put them at a, an interesting angle that's got a little bit of oomph, you know 
that's the decision making that you want. These are nice. Very again, very Jim Lee. Jim Lee. This is cool too. And Jim's Wonder Woman, her structure drifts like Wonder Woman when he draws her looks young. This is Jim Lee I'm talking about, and he draws her head kind of big. I've always noticed that with with, with uh, the way that he draws Wonder Woman is is different than like how he handled like Zealot and Voodoo. And I know they're structurally different humans or you know cartoon humans, comic humans, but uh, yeah, his Wonder Woman always looks really young. This doesn't look like as as much and this is nice again kind of the jorge jimenez um i i attribute that look to um it's kind of you know it's interesting is it sort of came from adam hughes and then jorge jimenez did like a digital version representation of it and then um you've got koi powell kind of does this traditionally but you know it's a very popular look right now and it's cool you know um I think we're all very used to seeing it. And so it's a level of detail and an approach to detail that's different than the traditional like hatching, you know, that you would see in back in the old days. So this is nice. I like when Francis does these more stylized pieces. They're actually very, very cool. Um, I like this color that he put on Batman. He may go in and do more on this. But this looks quite nice, as is. I mean, it doesn't look totally finished to me, but you could just do a little bit more, and I think it would actually look really, really good. This is nice. Yeah, wow. Art with a digital process. This is cool. This is um, from that one piece that we've seen a few times. And here's like the pencil joint for this. This is probably light box from a photo. You know, this might be too. I'm not saying that it is, but it's possible. Um, but but he did it in a pretty seamless way. It looks good. I mean, it's not not like trust me. It's not like he couldn't draw that. But uh, yeah, this is nice. I like the the clothes look good. This is all really really good. Looks like uh, the flats, very nice. There you go. Yeah, again, with the the wash, you know, you got to be super duper careful. So you can have Sandra Hope has a funny piece. She'll refer to it occasionally in posts, and I don't know if people actually get the joke. But she did a drawing one time years ago. And we've all had these, so it's not specific to her. But she calls it her burn victim. <laughs> but it was she was trying to do I think watercolor like watercolor inks like wa wa wash inks, and uh, her. <laughs> It was like working on a face and it just got darker and darker and darker. And it's, it's like it looked like someone had like a, what a super tan mom. <laughs> like this is a great drawing too. Man, that is so cool. Boy, he is really good. This is nice. Man. It's crazy. Like, I, I mean, man, it is really, really good. It almost has a tiny bit of like a John Romita Jr. feel. Just a little, little tiny bit. Wow. I'd be curious to see the underdrawing for this, how he set this up. Because I don't think that this was probably his first whack at this shot. <laughs> um, so I'm assuming this is sort of like the kind of finished pencils. We'll see if he... Uh, shows any versions this is nice i like how he's coloring this stuff in fact this is beautiful right here i think that looks really really good and francis if you ever see this video what's up this is nice too i like how he changed the liner or, or that has that little bit of the red uh color in there yeah this is fun lots to learn i need to pick francis's brain <laughs> give me your brain this is cool Yeah, really good. Damn. There we go. This is fun colors. He's doing that thing that I'm not a huge fan of, though. The kind of pinkish, purpley, um, like lighting on things. I, I've like this all looks really, really good. 
Um, but yeah, I don't know, for whatever reason, I'm not a fan of ambient um, like magenta on stuff. But that's a personal taste thing. It has nothing to do with like, did he do it right or not? That's just an aesthetic that I'm not a huge fan of. Small doses, it works. There you go. This is some traditional. Very cool. Blah, 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 blah. There you go. That looks nice. This is really cool effect here. He got that paper wet. Dab that ink on. Superman. He's super. Save the little kid. His S curl is gone. There. Now it's Superman. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I do my videos now on my Cintiq, and I'm using the stylus, so I can actually um, quickly go in and draw <laughs> if I need to. If a, if a drawing contest fires off, I'm ready to go. I want to see the underdrawing for this. I want to see how he set this up. Man, it turned out great. That's a nice little pen and ink piece. I, I like how he did the buildings, in fact. Let's go back one. That's kind of cool. It's it's suggestive, but you know, really, what's the money? The money on this page, I think, is this, and then this, and then you kind of sort of meander through all of this. But I definitely think that that for whatever reason, this little girl, I really focus in on her, and then I kind of always revert back to this couple, but the granny too. <clears throat> this is nice. It's funny because it reminds me of the Koi Pels Thor and. Koi Pell has the tendency to draw both sides of the nose. I kind of came up um, where, you know, it's like a lot of times the way that we draw noses is kind of, I call it the half the half nose, you know, where it's like you you don't really draw both sides of the bridge of the nose, but um, people do it. It's just a different, different look. And it's a kind of a straight on shot, but yeah, generally speaking, the head is usually turned a little bit to one side or the other. So, um, within that, um, you can, uh, sort of pick your poison with, uh, what side the bridge of the nose is going to be showing up on. And this is an interesting thing. I don't know if this is flipped. I'm thinking that it's not. I very rarely will I shadow something on this side of the face, but he's doing a page, but it's interesting. That the light is coming from here a little bit. I generally will have light coming from this side and my shadows would be... Well, no, that's not actually true. I take that back. It's really nicely done, though. It's interesting, too, because at this sh angle, I would almost think that you would see more of the underside of the nose. You know? But he actually brings the, the nose down. If you look, do you see this goes sort of down in? But it looks fine. And this will be dark, so it's not going to matter any either way. Like, he's got a little bit of rendering there. And this is trippy, too, because, you know, if you're underneath the jaw, you might see a little bit of that kind of thing going on. But... I've I've seen artists do that. It's it's interesting, and I'm not saying I, I like what he did here, but um, sometimes even with the eyes, you know, as the head starts to lift up like that, you know, in theory, your eyes sort of start to, you know, the pocket lifts a little bit, you know, because you're seeing the underneath of the lid, so it starts to do that, and then as the head is tilting back. Also, it starts to kind of fall, but his head looks solid. So it's it's more of a learning process for me. And then I'm I'm a fan of kind of indicating a little bit of a ear bump on Batman. What about you? Do you do the ear bump? I guess his ear bump is here. Um, but yeah, I I generally speaking will will put something that indicates the shape of an ear inside of the the the. Hood. This is classic Francis right here. This is a nice pose. 
You really pulled the chest back. Good. Bam. It's really nice. <laughs> okay. I like how he did that too. The um, trident looks cool. Oh, there we go. This is what I like to see. It's fun. This is really good. Wonder Woman looks nice. Yeah, that's nice. Really cool hair too. The way he did the bangs and stuff like that. This is all really good too. This is a hard shot, man. Very, very difficult. He's got Batman in perspective. That's really, really nice. This is very, very kick-ass. A really nice pose, too. Sorry, I meant to rotate the page. This is really, really good. His hands are a little small for me. I would have made the hands just a little tiny bit bigger. And this one, too. Even though it's back a little bit, I think. I'm kind of a fan of big hands, though, with my drawings. Like, probably from, like, the Joe Mad School thought. Watch when I take them back, though. You'll see what I mean. See, they're a little, they're a little tiny. They're realistic, though, but, uh, yeah. And there's this again. Really, really good. I like this almost feels like the magenta is a little more tame too. It's still there, but this actually looks a little more natural to me. He ended up, I think, ramping it up a little bit more. Okay, we'll just do like five more and then I got to split and get back to my work. My work in my world. These are squad goals it's to get to get to this level where I can draw good stuff and people will enjoy it and do YouTube videos on it. <laughs> Here we go. Man, that's nuts. Pretty cool though. Wow. Really interesting. Damn. That's so crazy. Oh, that looks nice with that blue. Yep, really cool. That's cool. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's cool, too. Damn. Wow. Really interesting. Huh. Yeah, that's really cool. Very dynamic. Dramatic, too. All right, so go follow Francis on Instagram and YouTube. I'll have links to both. You can uh, have some fun check out his very very cool art all of the generous works in progress that he shares and techniques and tips look at this this must be early early work from him hey and you know look i actually really appreciate that he's sharing this because we've all drawn at this level you know we all start off where things look like this you know it's not a gift that we're given you can look you know the thing is is this is someone with natural artistic ability too it's like the cape and stuff is cool, but drawing comics is challenging, you know? There's a learning curve to it that, that uh, anyone that's really going to be serious about doing sequentials, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hand your ass to you. And then you can either rise to the occasion and draw stuff like this, or not. It's really cool. is nice yeah he's a crazy he's crazy man he's putting in all the rendering and hatching and cool stuff this is legit <laughs> man look at that that is really cool yeah that's nice 
Damn. Wow, look at that. God damn. This is such hard shit to draw. Wow. That's really impressive. Upshots galore. <laughs> if you think it's easy, go for it. Give it a shot. Do your do your team team drawing with all these upshots. Shit can go awry very, very quickly. Very quickly. Even the hand positions can get hard. Even though really, I mean you're drawing fists generally at any angle anyway, so this type of upshot doesn't really change change that too much. But yeah, these will kick your ass. Really, really cool. This is a great drawing right here. Oops, sorry. I, this, is, this, is totally, this is awesome. This is really cool too. I'm, I'm really enjoying that a lot. Yep. Damn. You can see here he did a little bit of that under chin that I was talking about where you start to see this kind of thing going on your jaw basically just that you know because it's you're you're looking underneath it enough that you can see it you can see here he did it the one thing that i found with drawing heads at this this angle in particular and even this even though he's got a beard um is it really is kind of its own thing the idea of taking sort of your front view or other views and trying to do it on this is kind of doesn't work. I would always try to put in um, like the, uh, what do you call it? I guess like the skull, like a little bit. It just doesn't, I don't know. It's, it's, I was working with that yesterday. I'm kind of messing around with it. And yeah, I just, I've come to the conclusion that this is kind of something that you learn as its own thing. <laughs> You take what you know from other positions of the head, but yeah, this is kind of its own little creature. And and also, I would recommend to people is, is experiment with what part of the face helps you line it up, because it, more likely than not, the nose can be your guide to the success of it. Um, because uh, trying to set it up from other places, it can be problematic, you know? You just kind of keep trimming stuff away, but that's what I found is placing the nose and then getting the brow to sort of behave with it um, is sort of where it's gonna where it's gonna help you out. So, yeah, less is more too. The more you try to plug in, that's gonna authenticate it. Uh, can be, become problematic too. So get enough down that it reads like what you want and do not fuck with it, especially if you're working in traditional tools. Digital, you can always go back, but in traditional, if it's looking okay, just seriously leave it alone. <laughs> or you're going to open Pandora's box of, of, ugh, why did I change it? Why did I put that? Now I can't get it back. This is good too. Yep. This kid's done his homework. Yeah, it's really nice. Beautiful. This is all really, really cool, too. That's nice. I don't want to stop. I'm having so much fun. Okay, interesting. So, wow, I wonder if if he really, he, I, I just feel like that there might have been something under this initially, you know, some sort of a structural thing. Maybe not, though. Maybe not. Do you think this is a fake hand? <laughs> I mean, it's just a photo op. Or was he really working at that moment? Yeah, you can see this is probably light boxed. That's cool. Yeah, it's interesting. It's 
So this is digital. I'm assuming that, I'm sorry. Um, this I guess is digital too. This this you can see these are pretty um, like uh, single strokes here. He generally tends to work on his faces more. There's a little more scribbling going on. There's a little more value that he tends to put in him. You can see he's working a little bit harder on the faces. Uh, this stuff he can get give it uh, to the original sort of gesture and um, the sort of a less is more sort of approach it works. It's good. This is nice. Lots of upshots, man. He draws upshots a lot. It was funny as I'm, I've talked about this in, in some of my Jay Lee videos, but, but there was a point if you were a Jay Lee fan where Jay learned how to do the upshot where it's like he would do this kind of thing where everybody was sort of, you know, like, um, the sort of, Na I don't know, was it Namor or something like that, but it was like all of a sudden everybody was, was had a lot of attitude in his pieces uh but it was like it it went from him not really doing that shot to all of a sudden he was like i've learned it and like i'm gonna use it like for every cover um but francis does a lot of different angles he um like jay lee is a counterpart to this is jay, jay does a lot of like front and side views he does other things too but uh um yeah, when you see when you see Francis working, he puts the characters at a lot of different angles, which does up the challenge level of um, reproducing um, these kind of things. You know, he doesn't give himself a lot to hide behind with with uh, these shots. To wrap this up, you guys have a great day. I love you all, and uh, take a little gander at Francis's uh, Instagram and YouTube. I think you'll really enjoy it. All right, have a good one. Bye.